I have traveled to the planet Earth to encourage world peace. Unfortunately the only body I could inhabit is a lazy pug with a farting problem, so I will communicate with a laptop so you don't smell it. I do not understand why the most contested land in your solar system is Israel. It's just desert sand with salty lakes and no oil. I was searching online but was confused when I was taken to a website about Texas. Did you know there's a city in Texas named Palestine? Considering it's such a conservative area, I wonder if Palestine wants to bomb Palestine. But you'd think they'd love each other, they both want to succeed from the Union, cause they hate these foreigners on their desert land. And they both get very angry when you try gun control. However, I recently learned that not only Texas, but all of America sides with Israel. In this episode, we will debate why and if they should. Online it says that America gives Israel military aid of $3 billion per year, at $154 billion total. Why do they do this? <laughs> it's all political. Roughly 94% of Jews live in 13 key electoral college states. It'd be crippling to any congressman's campaign to be anti-Israel. You'd never hear a congressional candidate say, let's campaign. Which districts have Gaza Strip voters? But sir, Palestinian votes don't even count in Palestine. You're being short-sighted. Israel needs American money to help develop technology. What type of technology? Israel has the Iron Dome, which is capable of shooting down incoming missiles before they hit their targets. By 2014, the Iron Dome has shot down more than 1,200 of Hamas's rockets that would have hit populated centers. So what are you talking about? You're complaining that the Iron Dome costs too much money? You know what we would have done without America? We would have killed them! If anybody launched a thousand rockets at you, you would kill them! Instead of aggressing, the Iron Dome has turned Israel into the bubble boy. Oh no, don't hurt me, I'm allergic to missiles. Oh, ow, ow, oh stop hurting me. Because America unconditionally arms Israel, it makes a peace deal more unlikely since the Israelis don't have to listen to shit that the Palestinians say. Hi, I'm not an aggressive salesman, but do you find the screams of Palestinian children dying of white phosphorus poisoning to be annoying and keep you up at night? We have the cure to your insomnia with the all new Audio Iron Dome. With Audio Iron Dome, you won't hear anything going on in the Gaza Strip and you can rest a seamless, dreamy night. What are you talking about? The Israelis have offered so many deals to the Palestinians, all of which have been rejected. Some of the biggest ones were in 2000. They offered more than 90% of the land that the Palestinians want. Then again in 2008 and previously in the 90s with the Oslo agreements. And every time the Palestinians reject so many offers, you'd think they were panelists on the TV show Shark Tank. No deal. Bring in the next. Next guest. Mm, I don't really believe your projections. I sense that you're so desperate to get a deal. I'm out. No deals. Wrong. Total propaganda. According to a member of Israel's negotiating team, in the deal you just mentioned in 2000, Israel wanted 9% of the West Bank, which was enough to divide it in two. In addition, they demanded that Palestinians give up Haram al-Sharif, one of the holiest sites in all of Islam. Ehud Barak, Israeli Prime Minister, knew that Yasser Arafat would have to reject this deal because it goes against his religion. Why would Israel offer a deal they know will be rejected? To delay negotiations so they can continue to occupy the West Bank. I wouldn't be surprised if the next deal is, I'll give you all of Jerusalem. Some restrictions may apply. If you accept this, you must give up water and air and live naked in the desert for 40 years to appreciate Moses' suffering. Then they'll say to America, I offered all of Jerusalem. He is unreasonable. You can trust America to mediate this fairly. After they killed and conquered the Native Americans. You just made my point. Every other country, including America, established their country through conquering land. You're not calling for the end of America. So there's only one way to settle this. Like the Native Americans, Hamas can set up casinos. This casino is awful. Who would pay for a wackajoo game? That is my favorite game. Does the United States always side with Israel or have any American leaders criticized it? 
Barack Obama criticized Israel for the way that it systematically divides up the Palestinian communities to prevent them from being united in a two-state solution. Obama criticized Israel in his last two weeks of office. If it was such a pressing issue, then why didn't he do anything about it during his full term? He's basically going, thank you, America. It was a pleasure to serve you. Oh yeah, by the way, Israel's corrupt and you gotta fix the land issue, bye. You know Obama waited because it would have been political suicide to challenge the Israel lobby. What is the Israel lobby? There are groups that donate to US politicians if America funds Israel and keeps a perpetual agitation against Iran. The biggest one is APAC, or American Israel Public Affairs Committee. I guess they picked that name because it's a little more marketable than Kill Iranians group. So what? There's a huge amount of lobbying groups in Washington. That means nothing. But none with the influence of APAC. According to The Israel Lobby by John Mearsheimer, a congressional staffer is quoted as saying 250 to 300 members or more than half the House will do whatever APAC wants. The book quotes Stephen Rosen, a former APAC official, who said that when pointing to a random napkin, we could get over 70 senators to sign this napkin. You've been a very naughty boy. I'm gonna whip your balls and prod you with this dildo until you say the safe word. No, please, I'm very sensitive. The safe word is more money for Israel. All right, I'll let you run for another term. Do these groups donate directly to politicians? No, direct contributions are illegal. So they get around that by making each of their members make a personal campaign contribution. But to get around the maximum amount that each individual can donate to a political campaign, they split it up among not only their members, but other members of the community who are passionate about the issues. I'm homeless. I'll give you a dollar if you donate 50 cents to him. But I'm homeless too. So now you each have 50 cents to donate to Ted Cruz. We'll have the Gaza bomb by Friday. Now even the Palestinians are homeless. If it wasn't for homeless immigrants, Democrats would never win an election. In fact, they busted the polls so many random bodies, you'd think they were running a sex trafficking operation. And how much money you donate to a political figure is a freedom of speech issue because you can't separate the politicians from the ideas that they represent. Think about it like this. It's arbitrary to say that you can't give money to an individual, but you can buy as much as you want from a media company that represents their exact ideas. And even if you could give it to the politician, they would just buy ads from the media company. You shouldn't be able to silence someone just because they're rich. If you could, then I would just pay you to shut the fuck up. So you want to pay your enemies. That sounds like a great idea. You should join the CIA. And the crazy part is, we don't even have the money. America is borrowing to fund Israel's military. I never thought I'd live to see a progressive bitch about the debt. Maybe they can at least convince you to cut Social Security for the Jews. APAC is more influential than the NRA. Hey, P-Brain, guess what the Israeli troops are doing on the West Bank? Gun control! So you're saying, I can't have the NRA influencing our politicians. Why allow Islamic militants free access to arms? Would you stop criticizing the NRA if they made the president Iran's Ayatollah? Sir, stop right there. Do you have a permit for that weapon? Yeah, jihad. Oh, in that case, let me give you ammo. Come on, Israel has American politicians by the puppet strings. The only request I've ever seen denied is for Tomahawk cruise missiles. I guess a weapon named after the Native Americans would have just been too ironic. I question that America benefits from the $154 billion that Israel received. Conservatives say that it makes us safer because we have the same enemies. I argue the opposite is true. By arming a group of people that's actively seizing their land, it incites hatred among the Muslim community globally for America in an issue that normally we would have nothing to do with. Rest assured, voters, I will make us safe by taking this discount broom and smacking it to that angry beehive. Not to mention Israel dragging us into Lebanon's wars in 1982 trigger 9-11. I want to cover this Lebanon situation more in depth, but I'm a pug who needs a nap.
So in the next episode, we will learn about Lebanon's wars. Say your last words. I'd like to quote Barack Obama's Israel argument. Okay, bye. <laughs>